Hello. Are you interested in computer science or creativity? Maybe games or art? Well, I'd like to share a project with you here today. The CS1 game engine kind of forms a confluence of all those different avenues of exploration. And I want to share with you particularly some details, some technical details of how this uh, project is uh, managed, okay? So um, whether you're new to coding or a, a very senior uh, software engineer, um, I would like to put at least a very clear initial description out there of my process of formulating the uh, concepts behind the game engine as well as my patterns of developing the core of the engine itself. So uh, let me just start off with saying, okay, this, uh, what you're seeing right now is at glitch. And the reason I am developing, doing most of the development for this uh, game engine at glitch is because I want to get more familiar with glitch myself. And I'm an educator. And I'm going to expect that my students uh, develop certain things using Glitch. So I want to understand that platform in and out. And it's definitely uh, presented me with some challenges, but I have been able to overcome them. They're wonderful people uh, at Glitch. And I have found that you know I've been able to successfully work with the actual Glitch employees al along with people in the community to overcome uh, any issues that I might have um, been presented with. Okay, so we are in uh, this Glitch project right now, and the Glitch project houses the greater um, set of things that I'm working on. Uh, it's not just the, the game engine here, I'm actually working on a few other things in the same project. So. I want to say that this video is just going to be talking about the game engine itself and the development of that. Um, and even the game engine, uh, the game engine is its own project. And then there's the game server that goes along with it, but it's a separate project. And then there is a um, special like socket um, package that goes along with it. But at this point in time, it's basically just socket IO with a little bit on top of it. In the future, it might be a custom implementation of uh, WebSockets. But, okay, we're gonna focus here on this game engine project. So this is the main, well, it's actually not the main file. If I look at the main file, it's actually one level higher. The main file is what gets the build going on it, if you will. And I just import the CS1 file from module CS1. And over here at CS1, this is where I kind of bring in all the aspects, all the components, all the modules that kind of form this engine, as well as the domain-specific language API. You want understand there's going to be a lot of internals within the engine that only need to be kind of interfaced with internally, that don't need to have some type of surface area that the user of the engine deals with. So I make it very clear up front that the the surface area that the user deals with, and those, in other words, those methods, uh, those properties that access by the person using the game engine, those are what I refer to as the CS1 DSL API. It's a domain-specific language application programming interface, and that is what the actual users of the library are going to be interfacing with. So over here, you can see I'm specifying the beginning of the CS1 API, where you access the version of the engine, utility section, input for different type of devices, input flags, which is just the top level kind of, um, uh, if you will, object that contains a bunch of Booleans. And then we have this uh, really powerful add function. Um, I want to go down and focus specifically on one idea and walk you through that and use that as an example. So in one of the ideas, one of the new APIs that I'm going to pretty much show you how it's added is the CS1 design API. So um, if you're familiar with uh, web design or just design in general, uh, it doesn't have to be web design, um, any type of 
uh, design. Uh, there's really some best practices around adopting, you know, design a design system where you have a specification uh, or a set of specifications that are associated with that system, and you can easily move uh, out or in between to and from different designs uh, design specifications. Um, without having to change a bunch of code um, at, you know, kind of like in, at the implementation level where the actual um, programmers or you know, developers are working. So I want to have a design system kind of built in as, as part of the API for CS1. It's going to be called CS1.design. So let's go down here and I will show you where I'm importing the first part of that. So if I go down, I actually passed it up, didn't I? Yes. So over here on line 40, I say import design because it's a name. It's a named export from um, this particular path, um, ECS design. So if I'm, I'm over here and then I go um, to the ECS folder, which stands for Entity Component System, which means that all of the modules that are in this particular folder are defining entities, components, and systems, all right? Or, you know, one or more of those. And those take on a specific shape, and they're currently working with the A-frame entity component system. And that's why they are organized in this particular section of the modules folder. So if I look at, at the bigger folder I have is modules, and then we're in the ECS folder down here. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, important to understand. So a nice way to deal with the kind of appending or adding different APIs to the CS1 global object, a nice way of doing that, and one way that I'll normally do other than a few of those at the very beginning, is simply to use the um, system API. Um, Kind of like, or use the, I'm sorry, use the systems, register a system with the um, entity component system. That gives me some benefits for making things more dynamic down the road um, uh, for different types of uh, things that might want to change over time. You can automatically tie into the game loop. Um, they have a special function uh, that's available that you can tie into the game loop. Um, and they have a couple kind of, it's pretty much like an interface that's already set up that you can tie into. Um, and that's different from what I did over here in this main file, or excuse me, in the CS1 file, where at the top, I just set up this object literal and I added a few of the APIs right here, the utils, input, and flags, and add. I just put those literally in the CS1 file, and I could have done that with design as well. And the reason I chose not to do it with design is down the road, I might want to be more dynamic about it. The utilities, um, input and flags, um, these aren't going to need, I don't ever foresee them needing the kind of um, integration with the actual entity component system part of the engine. So I just put them on this object right here. Um, and currently the design, if you look at it right now, if I go into the design.js, it, it's currently just registering a system called design. And it's only initializing that CS1 design object, that API. It's importing from this DSL directory, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and it's just adding on to that object that we saw just a little bit ago, which was literally right over there in the cs1.js file, which is kind of this main file after the entry point. Now I could have put over here, uh, uh, I could have put over here design and then just imported the design directly there and done it that way, directly from that DSL uh, folder we're gonna look at in a little bit. But here, what I'm doing is I'm thinking down the road, again, I might do something that by registering with the design system, there's certain kind of dynamics that can happen. Um, and um, 
I want to maybe give uh, a richer interface with components um, in the future that kind of tie into the design being an actual system within the entity component system. So we'll see that. So um, system here is not necessarily meaning the same thing when we say design system. This means system within an entity component system, um, which is a type of, uh, it's a way of organizing your code. Uh, rather than uh, maybe thinking purely object oriented, thinking of thinking of entities, components, uh, and uh, systems, it gives you some advantages, uh, definitely in composing things and keeping track of things within a scene graph and so forth. All right, so right here, um, I, as you can see, I'm importing from this DSL uh, folder uh, in this design directory in this uh, design file. So let's go to that. So here's the uh, DSL directory, design directory, and then um, design.js. So let's look at that. And basically in this design.js file, I'm exporting design, which is just an object. Again, there's nothing really fancy about this. I'm just exporting an object right here. And the object has uh, you know, these different keys on it, properties, if you will, okay? It has these specs set spec, set spec by name, um, and the current spec, which is just dot spec, and then add spec if you want to add a spec. Okay, so the idea here is that, the basic idea is that you can, as a developer, uh, you can easily have everything in your game uh, fit a certain theme. And you should be able to even dynamically, if you create a game, you should even be able to expose options to your game players to be able to switch the theme if they want it to look uh, different. Um, and this will enable all of that to happen nicely. It will also ensure best practices, uh, being you design a specification, and then you implement that specification uh, by referencing general properties uh, that that meaning if uh, the underlying specification changes, those property references will not break any code. It will just allow everything to work perfectly fine. The only thing will change are those, um, the way that the actual design looks will change. Okay, so over here we have um, this import from um, specs. So this is a folder that's gonna have uh, specifications. And I only made one called pastel, just for an example. So over here in this DSL folder, I have design folder, then I have design.js, then I have a subfolder called specs, and then inside of there I have pastel.js. So pastel um, is an object, it's a specification, and basically at this point I'm mirroring pretty much exactly what you know, so it probably will grow in the future. I'm only doing colors right now, but we can also do like measurement related things. But for right now, it's just like colors and I'm pretty much doing the same thing like Bootstrap would do. So if you're familiar with web development, you've probably heard of Bootstrap, which is a great way to get on board with your uh, styling um, with CSS themes and so forth. So um, basically there's a bunch of different colors that are specified with these general properties, like the primary color, the secondary, success, like if you did something successful, danger, like a warning, a warning color, or information, or this is some information, maybe a light mode, a light color, and a dark color. Um, you can use those with different kind of modes and different environments as well. Um, but this is, you know, this can definitely be expanded. I want to get the basic, pretty much, uh, workflow. Um, out there so you can see my patterns of uh, developing the core to this engine. So hopefully some of you will be interested in contributing to this uh, game engine here um, as it develops. So here's all of these references for the name of the spec, the primary, secondary success, danger, warning, blah, blah, blah. And that's getting imported into this design um, object over here as one of the specs. So that's one of the so I'll end up designing more like built-in specs. I'm not gonna to put too many in there initially. I'm just gonna put a few. Don't wanna take up too much memory, but I'll put in a few, uh, just a few in there to kind of give, give a couple uh, options there. And then of course the user can add a specification um, directly over here by setting a name and then defining an object like right in line. They can just de define an object in code and kind of 
just test out different what different specs and different colors look like. It's just a really nice. This is going to be, I'm going to do a whole video on this. Some people might not realize why I did add spec and then, um, or um, set, or set spec, excuse me, set spec. There's add spec, name in the spec, and then there's also just set spec, where you just pass in a specification object. Uh, and I will do an entire video on this one in the future, because I'll show you, this is going to be really powerful. It looks kind of mundane, and it is, but... You know, these APIs, these system, you know, these aspects of these system are not trivial. They organize, uh, you know, creating a game, a good, you know, 3D you know, graphical application that, you know, has some serious kind of contribution to the user or, you know, at least some fun for the player if it's just a game. Um, you know, that's some fairly complex, uh, fairly complex uh, undertaking. So all of these uh, decisions of adding things to these APIs, each and every individual one is maybe, there's not much to it, but it simplifies the whole process. All right, so let's go ahead. I already built this um, into the game engine. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at, if I jump over here, I've already opened the window to this demo. And you can see this says cs1.design. That's how you can uh, access the, this design API. Um, and then it's basically an object with those properties. If I expand it, you can see the current spec is pastel with a primary color of that, secondary color of that, success, I can expand that. And you can see danger, dark, info, light, name, primary, secondary, success, warning. Uh, and then specs, this is the object that contains all the you know, pastel is the only uh, built-in specification that I have so far, like I said. And then the, the function add spec, set spec, set spec by name. All right, so this is the API, basically, right here. So um, sometimes when you're dealing with this API uh, at, at a game developer level, it's going to be maybe convenient for you to kind of alias. Uh, once you kind of chain fairly deeply into these APIs, um, it might be better to alias them and make shorter names rather than doing cs1.design. blah blah blah. And it, none of them are really that deep at this point, but down the road, it, it might become a thing um, for a developer to to do that. Um, but that's pretty much my uh, my the process uh, right now. Uh, so if I were to access, um, and I'll show you cs1. I'll give you an example cs1.design dot spec and so if I wanted to um, set something based on the primary color you can see right there is how I can access it that's not too much those cs1.design.spec.primary but if you wanted to just kind of alias that spec as spec and take off the cs1.design at the beginning if you're using you're kind of like laying out a bunch of different things and you might want to just make a, a reference or an alias to that um, to that uh, spec API so yeah that's pretty much it I really look forward to collaborating with uh, some of you in the future and I would like to encourage you no matter where you're at if you're a seasoned en engineer towards uh, getting close to retirement or even retired or if you've just started your uh, kind of quest into programming and you're very new to programming. It doesn't matter where you're at. This is a wonderful uh, project that's going to bring a lot of value um, to education as well as to the commercial industry. So, you know, educators uh, are definitely one of the, the, the main uh, target audiences and then uh, developers, uh, just actual commercial developers. So I don't want to spare performance and, and certain uh, things that are looked for by uh, industry professionals. Don't want to spare those. At the same time, I want APIs to be set up nicely. I want to have some curriculum that goes along with this as well to help um, educators, even from as uh, young as upper elementary school all the way up through, uh, you know, post doctorates in uh, university. So, and corporate trainings and what have you. So um, please reach out if you're interested in this project 
and I will do just one quick little run through again. Um, so whenever I am building this out, I'm currently, I'm building the whole kind of like bundle in roll up. Um, and then my bundle points to this main entry point here. And here I just import the, the main library right there, the CS1 engine. If there's some, something else in the future I wanted to wrap things with, that's why I have this other level of main. And because CS1 is actually uh, a module itself. So, so this is uh, an actual module. If you look down at the bottom, uh, you can see um, there's some other, I actually export CS1 down here. So this file here actually defines this CS1 module that's exported. Um, at the top, it's just importing a, a bunch of parts that go into the library. And what we looked at here today was uh, importing this design. Um, and this design right here is, a, is actually importing from the Entity Component System section over here, the Entity Component System section. And what I've done is I've created an actual system that will integrate with entities and components down the road so that I can, I, I can do some neat stuff with the design system and entities and components by doing it this way. Um, and then here I import the actual from this domain specific language directory where I'm just kind of, at this point I have a separate part of the project in the source code that um, kind of maps out what the, the user of the engine is going to be dealing with. And I keep that as kind of like a top level concern. So I have a special folder, even though some, a lot of these things aren't actually written in this directory, the actual code isn't written. For example, if you look over here for, um, flags, it's actually implemented in modules forward slash flags. Some of these aren't even actually coded out in the section, but I want to at least mock up the tree of, um, you know, the APIs, uh, that the user is going to see because this gives me a very quick visual in terms of design. Over here, I am putting actual code in this as well. It just depends on whether it works better that way. So over here, I have the design. It's an object. It has these properties. You know, some of them are just objects. Other ones are functions. I'm importing this other object called pastel, which is a specification in my specifications folder, my specs folder, and that's just an object. It has a, just a self-referencing name key, and then it has these other keys that are just basically patterned after Bootstrap 4, all right? Uh, and then this is all brought in uh, at you know compile time, build time, if you will, right? All this is brought in at build time uh, when the roll-up bundler does its thing, and that makes this cs1.design um, API available. And that's what's going to empower users of this library. Okay, I really appreciate everybody who I come in contact with uh, around this game engine. Um, and I really look forward to meeting uh, and uh, working with you in making this technology come to light. Take care.